welcome to Maui Retreat Center and also my home, where I offer my guests and my family alkaline ionized water. I know the great value this water brings, and I congratulate you on the purchase of your new Athena. I'm very excited to introduce Jay Hare. He's the president of Ironways, and he is here to show us how to install the ionized alkaline machine, Athena. Thank you, Katira, for welcoming us to your beautiful Maui Eco Retreat Center and home. And thank you at home for taking the time to watch this video. This short and informative video will show you everything you need to know to get the most out of your new Athena. In this video, we'll show you how to perform a simple installation. Then we'll show you how to operate your new Athena and optimize its performance. And finally, we'll show you the simple steps that you'll take in maintaining your investment. And please, protect your investment. Watch this entire video, and if you have further questions, refer to the excellent owner's manual that comes with it. Well, let's do it. Let's go. We'll start by unpacking the box. The first helpful tip I'd like to give you is to save the box and the styrofoam packing that it comes in. This will come in handy if you ever have to transport your Athena. Mm -hmm. So we'll just open the top of the box and in the top of the box you'll find a styrofoam lid that cradles your Athena and safeguards it during transportation. And it's got a few pieces in it. This is the flexible stainless steel drinking water spout. This is a reagent kit mm -hmm. and three test tubes to test your water with and then an installation kit which includes adapters and the diverter. Yeah. Wow, oh, this good. is um, your excellent owner's manual and also some installation uh, pieces, the hoses that we'll use to install your Athena. It's best to lay the box down on its side and then simply slide the Athena out gently it's great to have somebody helping you. Oh, it smells a little bit. Yeah, it's very usual that when they're bagged at the factory and then unbagged, that there's a fairly strong smell, but that will go away after a couple of hours. Uh-huh, good. Now, are you ready for a quick tour of the features? I am. How about you? Let's take a quick tour of your new Athena ionizer. On the front you have the control panel where the machine will identify the current function and where you'll be able to select the different functions. The control panel will come with a thin film of plastic to protect it during shipping. Let's remove that now. Below the control panel is the water flow control valve. It's just a simple on off valve and we'll show you how to use that later. Moving to the top of the machine, you'll see the calcium port where you can add extra calcium if you desire, and another port where we will attach the flexible drinking water spout. Let's take a minute and do that now. The spout will come in a plastic bag. Let's take a minute and remove it from the bag. You'll notice that one end has threads on it and we simply thread that into the port at the top of the machine and then tighten, but don't over tighten it. Just hand tight's good enough. On the back of the machine, at the top, this is a great feature. This is the speaker volume control. You can use a small Phillips screwdriver to adjust the speaker volume up, down, or turn it completely off if you don't want any speaker volume at all. These are keyhole slots that you can use for mounting your Athena on the wall. This is where you would replace the fuse if you ever need to, and this is the on-off switch. Moving to the bottom of the machine, we have the tap water inlet port down here where you are going to connect the tap water hose to the bottom of your Athena. And here is the acidic water outlet port where you'll connect the hose that drains the acid water out of the Athena. 
And last, we have the power cord and plug. One of the advantages your Athena offers is the wide range of installation options. You can install it at the sink, connected with a diverter and hoses to your tap. The second way you can install it is at the sink, but plumbed to directly to your cold water line. The last way that you can install the Athena is under sink completely out of sight with only a small dedicated faucet through which you'll access the alkaline water. If you choose either of the last two options, plumb directly to the cold water line or under sink, Ironways strongly recommends that you have a plumbing professional perform this type of installation. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to do the installation to the tap. So let's get started. We'll begin the installation process by attaching the two hoses to the bottom of the machine, the tap water inlet and the acidic outlet. Your installation bag will come with two coils of hoses, a thick gray one, which will be your acidic water outlet hose, and a thinner white one, which will be where we lead the water in from the tap. So we'll use the tap water inlet port, and before we begin, we want to make sure that the small check valve is open all the way. It should come this way from the factory, but let's just check it to make sure. Next, we'll brace the port with our free finger and insert the white hose firmly into the port. And then we'll check the installation by giving it a gentle tug to make sure that it's seated properly. If you ever need to release the white hose, you simply push on the ring and pull at the same time, and it comes right out. Let's reinstall it and move on to the acidic water outlet. We'll begin by placing a small compression clamp that came in the installation kit over the end of the hose about an inch, like that. Then we'll remove the black plastic cap that protects the acidic water outlet. And bracing the port, we'll just work the hose on, make sure it goes all the way to the end. If you have difficulty getting the hose on, before you try to attempt to put it on, you can soak the end of the acidic water hose in hot water for about 20 or 30 seconds, and that'll make the installation very easy. Once you get the hose firmly and correctly placed on the port, you'll want to use a pair of pliers to position the compression clamp over the port. And now we're ready to install it to the tap. To connect the hoses to the tap, the first thing we'll have to do is install the diverter to your tap. The diverter comes in a small bag with a few other pieces that you'll need to complete the installation. This is the diverter. Also in the bag you'll find three adapters in case the diverter doesn't attach directly to your faucet. These adapters and the diverter will handle about 95% of all installations, but it may be necessary to pick up an extra part at your local plumbing supply store or hardware store. These are two rubber washers and a compression clamp, just like we put on the acidic hose. The remaining pieces are drywall anchors in case you choose to install your Athena to the wall. Next, let's remove the aerator from the faucet. If you have a standard faucet, this will be at the end of the faucet, the last piece. And it should be finger tight. You should be able to unthread it with your fingers. If you find that it's on very tightly, you can use a pair of pliers to get it started and then remove it with your fingers. Let's try to use some of the adapters that came in the installation kit. 
And you can see, as with most spray faucets, they have specialized threads and thread sizes. So in this case, we needed to go out and purchase from the local hardware store another adapter. This is not included in your kit. This is the adapter we purchased, and you can see it's got threads on both ends, just like the adapters in the bag, but it also has this raised ring on it to make installation easy. We'll begin the installation by installing the rubber washer into the adapter and threading the adapter into the bottom of the spray faucet. Next, we'll install the diverter to the adapter and that just simply threads on the end of the adapter and again you want to tighten both pieces hand tight nice and firm don't over tighten them if you find that you have leaks from either the diverter or the adapter a couple of wraps of Teflon plumber's tape like shown here will solve the problem you can find Teflon plumber's tape at any good hardware store for about a dollar Now that the diverter is installed to the faucet, we'll attach the white tap water inlet hose to the diverter. We'll begin by rotating the diverter so that the lever is away from you, and you'll find a small compression nut facing you. We'll remove that compression nut and thread it onto the end of the tap water inlet hose, and then bracing the diverter, we'll push the tap water inlet hose all the way onto the diverter, making sure that it's on there firmly, and then we'll thread the compression nut back on to the diverter. Usually finger tight is good enough, but make sure it's firmly connected. The acid water hose just lays loose in the sink. And now your Athena is ready to use. The last step in installing your Athena is to plug it in and power it up. You'll notice that the cord to the Athena has a three-prong plug. And you'll want to make sure that you use an appropriate outlet like the one shown here. You simply plug it in. And to power it up, we'll turn the machine around and we'll use the on-off power switch located on the back. It's important to note that this switch always remains in the on position. The machine will go to sleep in between uses and wake up when it senses water flowing. So there's no need to turn this power switch on and off in between uses. Now I'm going to turn the machine around again and then I'm going to power it up by turning on the on off switch and you'll notice the lights will come on and then the machine will go to sleep. The lights up and the lights go off except for the filter life indicator which always stays lit. Now we're ready to learn how to use your Athena. Now that your Athena is installed and ready for action, let's learn how to operate it. The first thing you'll want to do is position the stainless steel drinking spout over the sink. The next operation would be to learn how to use the diverter. We'll start by turning the faucet on to a nice flow and flipping the diverter lever from left to right. Now you'll notice nothing's coming out of the diverter. It's being diverted to your Athena. So once again, left and the water flows out of the tap all the way to the right, nothing comes out of the tap and the, the water goes to your Athena. We'll move this so you can have a clear view of the controls on the Athena. To start water flow to your Athena, we'll turn our attention to the water flow control valve. This is a valve just like on your faucet. In the off position, all the way to the right, the water's stopped from entering the machine. In the open position, all the way to the left, it's fully on and it gives you a range of options in between. This is a great feature to improve and fine-tune the performance of your machine. 
So for right now, we'll just turn it on to a nice easy flow, about two-thirds between on and off. You'll notice the type of water is confirmed by, by voice, and here, in this case, it's purified, as indicated by the green LEDs on the screen. When the water first comes out in purified mode or in alkaline, because it's a granulated, activated carbon filter, there will be some dust buildup inside. Just let the water run for one to two minutes to flush this dust. That's absolutely normal with a carbon filter. Now to select alkaline water, you simply depress the alkaline button. Alkaline water selected. You'll hear the voice confirmation and you'll notice the blue LEDs indicating the alkaline colors and the level that you have selected indicated numerically here. Now when you're in alkaline setting, you'll get alkaline water out of the flexible tube and your acidic waste out of the gray tube. In purified, it's interesting to note that nothing comes out of the gray tube, only the purified water out of the flexible stainless steel spout. To adjust the alkaline setting to a different level, simply depress the alkaline button until the level is achieved that you desire. And you'll note that the level is indicated here. To select acidic, it's much like using the alkaline button. You simply depress the acidic button. Acidic water selected. You'll see the LEDs indicate that by the red lights. And again, the level is indicated here. Now when you're in acidic mode, acidic water will come out of the stainless steel spout and alkaline water will come out the gray tube into the sink. To change the acidic level, it's just like with the alkaline, depress it until the desired setting is achieved and you'll note the level indicated here. The last button on the control panel is the filter button. This controls the filter life indicator from filter 1 to filter 2. Right now we're in filter 1 and it's reading about 30. We'll depress the filter indicator. That moves it to filter 2 here and shows that we have a filter count of 23 on filter position 2. The numbers will never correspond exactly. This filter is designed to take up some of the, the, the initial filtering requirements to save your ever important biostone filter. To turn the ionizer off, you have a few different options. You can turn it off with the flow control valve by turning it to the off position, or you can simply turn off the faucet or flip the diverter. So turning it off with the flow control would look like this. Water turning it off with the diverter, we would just flip the diverter and the water would now come out of your faucet. And then you just simply turn the faucet off. This comes with your ionizer, this little bottle and uh, has a colorful chart with it. And Jay, would you tell us exactly how to use? I like it. I like it very much here. Sure, Katera. <laughs> That's the pH reagent test kit, and it's very important to learn and master the use of this to get the most out of your ionizer. Okay. Let's start by talking about the different pH levels as indicated by the colors on the pH color chart that's included in your reagent kit. The warmer colors indicate acidic water, while the cooler colors indicate the alkaline water. The first test tube has an orange color in it, which would be about a 4 pH. Remember, the colors are just an approximation. They're not exact, but they're very close to the actual pH. 4 to 5 pH water demonstrates mild sterilization and wonderful astringent properties and has a bunch of great uses. You can use it while brushing your teeth, you can gargle with it, you can use it as a natural mouthwash, and because it's a good astringent, you can use it for washing your face or as a natural aftershave. And some house plants actually love it because rainwater is acidic. The next test tube has a green color, which would be about a 7 on the pH color chart, indicating neutral, neither acidic nor alkaline. 
Most tap water in the United States tests between 6.5 and 7.5, someplace in that range. So this green color is what your Athena will produce when it's on the purified setting. Remember, always take prescription medications and make infant formula with the purified setting. The next test tube has blue, which indicates about an 8 pH on the color chart. You'll want to start drinking your alkaline water with a nice blue color. You'll want to give yourself five to seven days to adjust to the increase in alkalinity in your water by staying at that blue level. Once you're comfortable at that level, you can move to the next level, which would be indicated by a violet color in this test tube, or about a nine on the pH color chart. This is the water I like to drink. Just as with the blue, you'll want to give your body time to adjust with the violet. Another five to seven days or until you're comfortable. And then if you want, you can experiment with the higher levels of alkalinity, although there's no reason to believe that the higher levels produce exponentially better health results. As a matter of fact, most people find that the stronger the water, the less pleasant it tastes. I like to drink a 9 pH. It tastes great and provides me all the wonderful health benefits. If you're cooking with the water, you will want to use the stronger pH, 10 or above. And it's fantastic for doing vegetables, cooking rice, grains, or making tea and coffee. Understanding how to test pH in your water is crucial to understanding the performance of your Athena ionizer. Different areas of the country have very different tap waters. For instance, in some areas of the country we have hard tap water, which is water that's high in calcium, and that water will tend to measure very high in pH, as high as sometimes 8 or even a little higher. Other areas of the country have soft water, water that's very low in calcium, and these waters will tend to measure very low on the pH scale. Some well water measures as low as 5 pH. Your ionizer will have to work that much harder to alter the water when there's not much calcium in it for the machine to work with. So crucial to understanding the performance of your ionizer is understanding your tap water. So the reagent bag that came in the styrofoam lid of your ionizer has a few parts in it. It's got a spare fuse. You'll want to save this and put it in a safe place in case you ever have to replace the fuse. It's got a pH color chart which has an adhesive backing to it. And I'm just going to place this on the machine right here for the purposes of our testing. And then, of course, it's got the reagent drops themselves, which are the red liquid drops. The top of the styrofoam packaging also has three glass test tubes. And I'm going to use one of those here to test the tap water. Testing the pH is going to be the same whether we're testing tap water, or acidic water, or alkaline water. And to do that, to test properly, we're going to fill the test tube up about half. It doesn't have to be precise, but approximately half. And then we'll place three or four drops of the reagent into the water, shake it up, and compare to the color chart. And you can see that's a pretty solid green color, which indicates a pH of around 7. So now let's test some various setting levels of alkaline water. To do this, we'll turn the machine on to a nice easy flow, about half. Alkaline water selected. And we're going to test a level 2 pH. So we'll fill the test tube up about half. Add our three or four drops, shake it up, and now you can see that that's a nice solid blue color, which would be an eight, maybe an eight and a half. Now we'll test a higher level of alkalinity. Let's skip all the way up to four and show you the difference. Alkaline water selected. We'll rinse the test tube out. Fill it up again about half. Three or four drops. Shake it up. And you can see that that's a nice dark purple. That's probably in excess of 10, I'd guess, somewhere around a 10 and a half. 
Most people wouldn't want to drink this level of alkalinity. Some do. Next, I'd like to show you a crucial concept and demonstrate this for you. Flow rate has a very definite impact on performance in your ionizer. A very fast flow rate and the water is not processing in the machine for very long and won't receive very much alteration. A very slow flow rate means the water is in there processing for a long time. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to turn the flow on to about a medium. Alkaline water selected. We're going to select alkaline level 2. And we'll start by testing the water at this baseline measurement. Filling it up about, about half. Adding our drops. And again, you can see that that's a nice solid blue color, maybe an eight and a half. Now without adjusting the alkaline setting, I'm going to slow the flow down. You can notice the slower flow by the reduced amount coming out of your spout, almost a trickle. We'll fill the tube up about half again and add our three or four drops and shake it up and now you can see that that water is purple. I haven't adjusted the alkaline setting, I've simply adjusted the flow rate. So use the flow control valve as a way to fine tune your performance. Slower flow, more alteration, higher pH, fast flow, lower pH, it's very simple. In the manual it says you can add extra calcium. Uh, when would I do that and can you say something about that? Sure, Katira, that's a great question. Most areas of the country have plenty of naturally occurring calcium in the tap water already, so you won't ever need to add calcium. In areas where the, water, the tap water is very soft, say a pH of 6 or lower, you'll need to add calcium to help boost the performance of the machine. It's very simple. Let me show you how to do that. Great. Thank you. To replace the calcium, we'll begin by twisting the silver cap at the top of the port and removing. It may be sticky the first or second time, so simply use a butter knife to gently pry it up and remove the, the assembly. Then you simply twist the basket, remove it from the cap, get your replacement basket out, remove the cap from the replacement basket, Insert the basket into the cap. Put the basket and the cap back into the port and twist it to lock it. It's important that you get a tight seal by twisting it to make sure that water won't leak out of the top. If you find that you do need to add the calcium to boost the performance of your machine, the calcium will come in vials when you originally purchase your machine. But as you repurchase calcium, they'll come in small red vials or jars that you can use to simply refill the empty basket so that you can reuse the basket over and over again. You know, I really like that water and I like to take it with me wherever I go. What is the best way to store it? I take it with me wherever I go as well. There's a few tips. Let me explain those to you. There's definitely an order of preference when considering containers to store your water. And they're shown here in order of desirability, starting with the least desirable, which are the soft plastics, like the number one PET recyclable bottles, as indicated by the one in the triangle on the bottom. These are least desirable. Next, you've got the hard plastic, or Lexan or polycarbonate, which is indicated by a seven inside the triangle on the bottom. These are better than the soft plastics. Better than either plastic is glass. Glass is totally non-reactive and a better vessel than the two plastics. There's a lot of research that suggests the plastic leaches harmful agents into the water as it's stored in plastic. 
But best for anything to store the water is the Iron Way's proprietary bottle. It preserves the healthful qualities longer than glass and certainly longer than either of the plastics. So the ideal way to store the water is to fill the container all the way to the top with as little air as possible at the top. And if you can, keep the water cool. It's ideal to keep it in a refrigerator and out of the sunlight. That will help preserve the, the quality in the water. But the best is to drink the water straight out of the machine. That way the healthful qualities are at their peak. That's it. Now, Che, how do I know when it's time for me to change the filter on the Athena? Your Athena has two filters in it, and each one has its own filter life indicator. When either filter life indicator reaches 9999, oh. it's time to change your filter. Let me show you how to do that. Oh, great. Your Athena has a dual filtration system. So there's two filters, filter 1 and filter 2. This is the replacement filter for filter position 1 and the filter replacement for position 2. The filter in position 2 is called the Biostone filter and includes the band of coral calcium and tourmaline. Let's show you the difference in the filters because they're actually different sizes. This is the replacement for filter position 1 and the filter replacement for filter position 2. So the smaller of the two filters is the one that will change. We'll begin by depressing the small ridges on the side of the filter housing door, swinging it open and lifting it out. Then the mechanism is spring-loaded and you simply push down and remove the filter. A little bit of water will drain out. Now very important, you want to remove the filter cup because this is what will hold your filter in place inside your Athena. Remove the plastic caps on both sides. Install the filter cup onto the bottom of the new filter. Replace it into the housing. Push down. Seat the top. And then give it a nice wiggle to make sure that it's properly seated. If it's not, it could leak and you'll need to reseat the filter. The filter can only go into the housing in one direction because the fittings on either end are different sizes. You'll know it's right because you can read the writing on the label. The last thing we'll do is reset the filter life indicator by depressing this button for about five seconds until the indicator goes back to zero. When you reinstall the filter housing cover, you'll want to line the three slots up with the three tabs on the filter housing door and then click it into place. And it's that simple. Replacing the Biostone filter is essentially the same. We remove the filter housing door, depress the spring-loaded mechanism, remove the expired Biostone, making sure that we save the filter cup, remove the caps from the new Biostone filter. Now you'll notice that the the filter housing sizes are different, so you can never put the Biostone into filter position one or vice versa. Install it into the filter cup, press it down in the spring-loaded mechanism, make sure that it's nice and firmly seated, change the filter setting to filter two, and reset the counter, Replace the housing door, and you've got new filters. What happens when my ionizer won't light up or doesn't operate? Well, hopefully that will never happen. But okay. if it does, the first thing that you'll want to do is check the outlet to make sure that you've got power to it. The easiest way to do that is to plug an appliance that you know works into the outlet and see if it works. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work, then chances are your circuit breaker is flipped. So check that next. Ah. 
If you have power to the outlet, then chances are it's the fuse. Let me show you how to replace the fuse. Oh, good. Your Athena comes equipped with a fuse to protect it in the event of a severe power fluctuation or surge. If that happens, the fuse will blow, protecting the expensive circuitry inside the machine. So let's show you how to replace the fuse. We'll begin by unplugging the power cord from the wall and turning the machine around to access the fuse holder. The next thing we'll make sure just to be safe to turn the power switch off. The fuse holder is right next to the power switch and it's a threaded component so we'll simply unscrew it to remove the old fuse. We'll check the old fuse to see if the wire inside the fuse is broken. If it's broken it is time to replace the fuse. You simply remove the fuse by pulling on it and inserting the new fuse into the holder and reinserting the whole assembly back into the fuse holder and re-threading it. Make sure that it's tight but not too tight. Finger tight's good enough. Lastly, you'll want to turn the machine back around, plug it back into the wall, and power it up. To summarize, I'd like to review a few key points from this DVD. Number one, and most importantly, remember to let your body naturally and slowly acclimate to the increased level of pH in your drinking water. Begin at the lowest setting, or one, and stay there for five to seven days before you move to the next highest setting. When you do move to the next highest setting, stay there for five to seven days, and at each increment, give your body this time to adjust. Listen to the wisdom of your body. It'll tell you what level of pH you prefer to drink. I myself like a 3 or about a 9 pH. There's no real reason to, to believe that the highest level of pH delivers the highest level of health benefits. And also remember that to get the most out of drinking this type of water, you need to drink the right amount. The general rule of thumb nowadays is not the old 8, 8 ounce glasses, but rather at a minimum half of your body weight in ounces. So a 200 pound man would need to drink a minimum of 100 ounces, which would be a little more than 3 quarts or 3 liters. Next, when considering the performance of your Athena, remember the crucial relationship between the flow rate and the setting level. Remember from the video that you can adjust the pH levels without changing the setting just by playing around with the flow rate. To sum that up, a slow flow rate through your machine equals a higher pH and a fast flow rate through your machine equals a lower pH. Also, don't forget that the input water from your tap plays a crucial role as well. The harder water areas, the machines are going to perform exceptionally well. The softer water areas, the machine you may need to add calcium or slow the flow down to achieve the highest levels of pH. So the relationship between flow is very simple. Slow flow, higher pH. Fast flow, lower pH. Lastly, if you have any further questions, refer back to this video or the excellent owner's manual that comes with your Athena. In closing, I'd like to toast your decision to increase your health and wellness by purchasing the finest ionizer on the market today, your brand new Jupiter Athena. Cheers to you.